Entitled mother tries to dump her kids off at a mentally disabled focused organization. Here's what happened. Subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit the bell for notifications. I'm part of a leadership of a Korean Christian volunteering organization that helps mentally disabled kids slash people find their places in the world. Our main goal is to show them that they can be part of the society and they don't need special treatment or be talked down to. We spend time with them Saturday from 12 to 4 p.m. doing various activities such as worship, dance worship, Korean Christian thing, probably not found in American churches, arts and crafts, making snacks, physical education, etc. The volunteers are mostly high school teens looking to get some hours or college students to take their minds off the tough study. We group the kids or people by their age group and one group is called siblings. The kids in this group do not have mental disabilities, but they are brothers or sisters of the kids who do, hence the name. Now, looking at the title and the fact that there is a group for non-disabled kids, you're probably thinking, this is going to go exactly the way I'm thinking, isn't it? And yes, it does. Cast. Me, a cyborg riding a velociraptor, the entitled mother Maleficent, the entitled kid, the hell spawn, volunteer guy, and head leader girl. This happened almost a year ago, but I just joined leadership. The day started just like any other day. I was standing by the entrance to greet the kids and their parents. The parents of these kids were nice folks who always thanked our organization. And then she showed up. Cue the disaster siren or any form of warning alarm. I see a fancy looking Lexus coming into the parking lot. Stepping out is entitled mother dressed in the most rich snob clothing I've ever seen. Coupled with, I want to speak to your manager haircut. And Entitled kid, maybe six or seven-ish, stepped out soon after, and although he wasn't dressed in any fancy clothes, the way he walked and looking at the cell phone reeked bratty attitude. Me, dying inside from cringe, hello, welcome to our entitled mother cutting me off. Yeah, yeah, let's skip the boring part. I heard you guys watch children for the day. Me, trying hard to put up a smile, yes, but we're a volunteer group that spends time with children with mental disabilities. Entitled mother obviously wasn't paying attention. Okay, great, how long do you guys go for? Me. 4 p.m. Now, what mental disability does your entitled mother? All right, I'll be back by then. This should be enough for the day. Keep the change. She then handed me $300 and left before I can protest we're nonprofit. Before I could catch her, she was already driving out of the parking lot with no contact information. Now, it was important for us to know what mental disability these children have so we can act accordingly and convince them to participate in each activity. As a newly appointed leader, I had no idea what to do. So I left the kid in the little playroom and told head leader girl what happened. After a quick group meeting with head leader girl, other leaders, and the pastor who was in charge of every branch in our state, we decided to keep Entitled Kid in the siblings group until the end of the day and explain to Entitled Mother what our organization is and what we stood for. So 12 p.m. strikes and all the volunteers and the mentally disabled kids and people arrive. It was time to start the workshop and we had a policy of putting the phones in a bin to be distraction free. Other than the leaders who needed them for communication, everyone had to turn them in. So while while volunteers and other kids were turning in their phones, Entitled Kid was still on his phone, playing what I can only guess is Fortnite. We approach him to ask him nicely. He gets really defensive about it and screamed how he wasn't done and was in the middle of a match. Volunteer Guy was paired with Entitled Kid for the day, and while he was distracted, Volunteer Guy snatched Entitled Kid's phone and placed it in the bin, which was on a shelf that Entitled Kid couldn't reach. Entitled Kid started to throw a tantrum. Volunteer Guy, please stop, we'll do something fun, I promise. Entitled Kid, you jerk faces, screw all of you, you'll pay for that. Except not exactly in those words. You can imagine everyone's shock and disbelief. Not only this six to seven year old just swore and acted like he was a big shot, but he did it in front of everyone. Volunteer guy and head leader girl had to tow away Entitled Kid into a separate room. Head leader girl was scolding him, nothing too harsh, but fair and strict, and calming him down, while the rest of us went on with our activity. Entitled Kid joined the group back after the sermon was was over and we all headed to the dining hall for lunch. The lunch is mostly Korean slash Chinese food prepared by other Korean churches in our state. It was a buffet style so everyone can grab what they want on their plate. Entitled Kid grabs the food he wants and when seated he threw the plate at Volunteer Guy. He complained he didn't know what the foods were and they looked disgusting. So once again Head Leader Girl took him to a separate room and this time I could hear frustration in her voice. I won't get into too much details on what happened for the rest of the day because this 
post would become a very long one. So here's a simplified version. During craft, he got into a fist fight with other kids over crayon color and was swinging scissors very dangerously at volunteer guy. During snack time, he refused to follow the direction on making the snack and tried to hog all the ingredients for himself. Finally, during physical education, he wanted everyone to play a game that made no sense. And when he saw no one was playing with him, he threw another tantrum. And every time, head leader girl and volunteer guy had to deal with entitled kid. If he had a mental disability, they would have known how to handle the situation better. But entitled kid was just a brat who was giving both of them a headache. After all that, you think entitled mother would at least pick up her kid at 4 p.m. But no, she showed up an hour late. Entitled mother. Sorry, the talk with girlfriends went too long. Anyway, same time next time. Head leader girl. Actually, ma'am, as we were trying to tell you earlier, we're not a daycare. We're a volunteering organization. Entitled mother. Uh, potato, potato. They're basically the same thing. Head leader girl. No, we are not. We are dedicated to help mentally disabled children. What entitled mother said next shocked everyone and I can still remember to this day. Entitled mother. You let my son sit next to those mentally disabled people? Except she used a much worse word. Head leader girl trying to keep calm. Ma'am, please keep your voice down and refrain from using that word. Entitled mother. No, you let my son be infected by those filthy mentally disabled people. What if he becomes mentally disabled? Head leader girl. Entitled kid was also having bad behavior throughout the day. Head leader girl explains entitled kid's actions for the day. Entitled mother. That's a lie. My precious angel would never do that. Besides, you guys are a daycare. You should have separated my son from those mentally disabled people and do what he wanted. My son deserves to be treated better. Head leader girl. We have at least 12 eyewitnesses that would beg you to differ. And we are not a daycare. We are a volunteering organization. We are here to serve children in need, not go along with what a single person wants. Head leader girl was younger than me, but she's been doing the volunteering for almost 10 years since she was 14 and was an amazing leader. I would be lying if I said I didn't respect her, maybe even had a crush. So when Entitled Mother's face turned red and went in to slap head lady girl across the face, I stepped in to hold her wrist back. Me. Please leave. This behavior is inappropriate. Entitled mother. You. You said you guys watch children. Me. No. I said we are a volunteering group serving children with mental disability. Entitled mother. But you asked for payment. Me. Actually, you handed me $300 and told me to keep the change. I was going to tell you we are nonprofit, but you wouldn't listen. Entitled mother. You're lying. I'll sue you guys for kidnapping and assaulting my son, exposing him to mentally disabled kids, sexually assaulting me, and stealing my money. I will tell everyone to review bomb this daycare. Thankfully, none of the kids were here by this time. Me pointing at the camera. Go ahead. We got recording of you and your son from the moment you entered our parking lot. I hand her back the money. Now take your money and leave our place before I call the police and have you removed by force. Entitled mother's face turned pale and left with entitled kid. What entitled mother didn't realize that we weren't business owned, so we had no Yelp page for her to review bomb. We never saw them again. We were worried about volunteer guy after going through all that, but he was surprisingly cool with what happened and continued to volunteer admirably until he was appointed as one of the leaders six months later. All the leaders agreed to be more diligent on unfamiliar people coming into the building. So here's the question, am I the jerk? Wow, this one is kind of a lot, to be honest. First off, we have Entitled Mother who completely ignored everything that was being told to her in the beginning and potentially could have been leaving her child with strangers, not paying attention to what was being said to her. It's grossly negligent of her as a mother to be leaving her child like that and not confirming or leaving any details or contact information or anything of that nature. Then we have the entitled kid himself. Clearly mom's lack of attention has paid off with this little one. He clearly is used to being able to do whatever he wants with no consequences and no one can say anything to him otherwise. Makes me kind of curious what came first. Was it mom ignoring him and he became this way? Or did he become this way and mom couldn't handle it so she just started ignoring him and it only got worse? I'm tempted to lean towards the mother is probably just negligent given the way that she treated everyone when she was picking her son up, including but not limited to the names that she was using and the threats that she was making. I really just don't understand how people can sleep at night being a person like this. Before we jump into the next one, if you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description.
Here's another post from the same user where an entitled mother gets roasted by an autistic child. I have another story from my volunteering to share with you guys. Let's get to the cast for this story. Me, just your everyday Reddit guy, head leader girl, autistic kid I'm paired up with, entitled mother and entitled kid. So last Saturday, instead of spending time indoors, the leaders, me included, decided to take everyone to the beach. The beach was about a five minute drive away from our building and everyone loved going to that beach whenever the weather was nice. The day was going great. Younger kids loved lifting up the rocks to go crab hunting, while older kids just appreciated Appreciated walking around the beach. At one point, Entitled Mother and Entitled Kid came to the beach, and Entitled Mother didn't like the fact that children with mental disabilities were there first. She started yelling at us volunteers and leaders, demanding we clear out, since the kids were causing public disturbance. This was a public beach, and there were plenty of people there before us, and no one had any problem with us. Head Leader Girl This is a free space for everyone, and no one has brought this up yet. Since it's just you who seems to have a problem, perhaps you can go to another part of the beach or go to a different one. This seemed to shut her up and she took her kid far away from us. We spend another 30 minutes at the beach until it was time for us to go back and time for the parents to come pick up their kids. One of the leaders had bought ice cream for everyone and when everyone was enjoying it, Entitled Kid came out of nowhere and snatched unopened ice cream from Autistic Kid's hands. Me. Hi, can you give that back? Autistic Kid wanted that. Entitled Kid. No, Mommy said I can do whatever I want and I want this ice cream. Me. Well, we don't have enough to give out. Lie. Didn't want to deal with Entitled Kid. And that belongs to Autistic Kid. Entitled Kid. I don't care. This is my ice cream now. Just then, Entitled Mom calls for Entitled Kid from the beach entrance to go home. While Entitled Kid is distracted, I snatch the ice cream from Entitled Kid's hands. Entitled Kid runs up to Entitled Mom and I ask Autistic Kid to start eating the ice cream. The two of them come back with Entitled Mom looking like she wants to start a battle. Entitled Mother. You took my angel's ice cream? Me. He took Autistic Kid's ice cream without asking and we don't have enough to give out. Entitled Mother. So what? Entitled Kid deserves the ice cream more than these mentally disabled people. She did not use those words. In fact, she just dropped the F-bomb in front of the kids, volunteers, and other people at the beach who were close to us. Head Leader Girl. Ma'am, please don't use that sort of language in front of the children. You are not being a good role model. You're educating your son to steal. That's not a good lesson. Entitled Mother. These mentally disabled children should not be allowed to be in public. Now give my son an ice cream or I'll call the police. Me. Yes, they might be special, but at least they understand stealing is not okay. Entitled Mother was about to yell more profanities when Autistic Kid started to laugh hysterically. Entitled Mother. What are you laughing at, you mentally challenged person? Again, not the words she used. Autistic Kid laughing. Would you please be quiet? You're an adult and shouldn't act like little kids. Everyone, including the volunteers and the crowd that has gathered around, burst into laughter. Entitled Mother went red from embarrassment, and just as she was about to get physical with Autistic Kid, an off-duty police officer came up from the crowd and threatened to arrest her for harassment and attempted assault, and that made her storm out of the beach. I loved being with Autistic Kid because he's honest with everyone and everything, but he has forever earned my respect for roasting her. So let's be honest, who's the jerk here? And that title is very clearly going to go to both Entitled Mom and Entitled Kid. I feel like the word entitled doesn't even begin to describe their actions. I want to sit here and make comments about how wrong it is to do these things, but most general people know this. This isn't newfound knowledge for you, right? I hope not. However, apparently this entitled mother has gone through her entire life without learning the basic lessons of common human decency. It's clear it's already starting to rub off on her child, I just hope he gets his act together before it's too late. In the meantime, it is never okay for an adult to treat a child in this manner, especially one with mental disabilities. This is absolutely disgusting behavior. My sister-in-law's entitled friends don't know how to take no for an answer. I've been childminding for the past 10 years. Most children I look after from 0 to 5 and sometimes look after them whilst they go to school, so most children I've known since birth. I don't charge a set rate. I grew up in a struggling one-parent household and saw firsthand how difficult it was to look after children slash work and survive. I grew up practically raising my brother so my mother could work. It's not nice. So I charge what parents can afford. This does mean that this isn't exactly good income, but I enjoy my work and me and my partner are doing well. Trouble 
started when I found out I was pregnant. I knew my sister-in-law's friends from a few occasions and sister-in-law recommended I look after their children, six months and three. I started looking after them and it was overbearing. I'd get texts at 1 a.m. asking, what did they eat today? Firstly, I keep a diary of all children which is accessible to their parents, which is hard enough to keep track. But also I told her at the end of the day. Then I miscarried four months in and told all parents that I'd be taking a month off. She would text me slash try to drop the children off and I ended up only taking two weeks off because the stress of her just wasn't worth the break. I informed her that her children's care was beyond what I could offer as I was busy caring for other children while she spams me with texts and tries to meet me outside of work hours. At the end of the day, our relationship should have been professional and it wasn't. I learned in my childcare course that this is a boundary she wasn't keeping. She wouldn't accept this. My partner suggested we up our prices, so we asked her how much she could possibly afford. She said 100 a week, which I do childcare for her alone for 35 hours a week. I know she works full time and so does her partner, so I think she's making a mockery out of what I offer, which is aimed towards low income slash single households. But I did have to accept it's what I offer. When I had originally started to child mine for her, I didn't realize there'd be this many problems. So I told her I'd charge 200 pounds a week and she actually agreed. Then didn't drop the children off, but it's not a loss for me. My sister-in-law texted me saying I ruined a longtime friendship and should have set boundaries before. I tried once, I said, and it's not my job beyond asking once. But sister-in-law is adamant I'm the jerk here. I don't think I am, but I figured outside point of view would be good. Am I the jerk? In this instance, I'm going to have to make the call of not a jerk since this mother and her husband both work full time and they were just potentially taking advantage of the discount offer they were getting. Now, don't get me wrong, everyone wants to save some money, but when it comes down to the fact that this person's telling you that they cannot look after your child right now due to other personal issues, that's something that you need to accept. It sucks that that convenience has been taken out of your life and that you're gonna have to find someone new to look after your child for you, but it's a matter of respecting that that person needs that time to themselves. Regardless Regardless of how you may feel about their situation or what they're going through, they've stated that they need that time. You have to give it to them. At the end of the day, I would just be glad to be moving on from this situation without it having turned into something overly confrontational. Her sister-in-law says that she's ruined a lifelong friendship, but I really hope that isn't the case. Either way, it was something that the poster felt they had to do. My fiance seems to be a little too reliant upon her mother. I'm 33 and she's 26. We had a fight and she complains I don't let her stay at home the weekends she wants. The thing is, I don't get to decide if she stays or not. What happens is that I get upset because we're about to get married and she can't be comfortable in our future house, or even with me. Many places I lived and she never felt like it's her home, but I think the issue is something else. She's very dependent on her mom. She's extremely emotionally attached to her mom. She lives with her parents still. She tells her mom everything. Her mom makes decisions for her a lot of the times as well. Sometimes she even shares stuff about me with her mom that was supposed to be only between her and I. I mean, if she wants to stay at home, she can, but I have the right to be upset. And the reason I get upset is because every time something a little annoying or frustrating happens, she runs to her mom. Every fight we have, she ends up saying, I want to go home, and I just take her. Upset because we can't talk it out, but I do take her. And to be honest, we only fight because because she won't talk stuff out like adults should. She bottles everything up and explodes. She says she wants to be alone, but why is being alone at our place not an option? When she wants to be alone, I just disappear and go do my things. She won't admit she's spoiled and just wants to hear the sweet little lies her mom tells her to make her happy. She basically wants to live in an imaginary world where everything is perfect. I keep trying to talk to her about needing to take responsibility and face her problems in order to get married. And she did better and now doesn't want to go home after every fight. Just the more intense ones, which are quite rare. Now, what happened is that she was sick and wanted to stay at home. And I was like, well, you can stay at our place and I'll help you out or leave you alone. Up to you. And because of this type of stuff I say, she says she can never stay at her place. But we only see each other on the weekends. Is it too much to want her around? Am I the jerk for getting mad she wants to go home when basically any annoyance happens or when she gets frustrated? Okay, so for this scenario, I do feel maybe it's a little different and I would actually be very interested to hear her side of the story. It does sound like maybe there is a little bit too much conflict happening if you guys only see each other on weekends and are fighting this much. Now, I also understand your frustration that you guys are getting married and you're only seeing each other on weekends. 
So as I said, it really could go both ways. However, at the end of the day, you guys are about to get married. She needs to understand that you guys are going to be living together and this is what her life is going to be. If she's that opposed to it and that uncomfortable with it, maybe a conversation needs to happen. My wife's parents just cut her off and I don't really have that much sympathy for her. My wife led a privileged life. She's not shallow by any means. She volunteers at a homeless shelter, does charity work, and does a lot to help whatever cause she believes in at the time. She also does those charity runs and stuff. She's just a little naive. Her parents funded her entire life, even after she moved out. An example could be that she would only drink Voss water rather than tap, or would spend 500 pounds on an outfit she wore once, then donated to charity. They paid for holidays, etc. My wife says she resents this looking back on it because it left her totally unprepared for life. I will admit she did try a few times to be independent, but it never worked as her parents guilted her into accepting their help. It wasn't without cost. She was expected to get 100% on exams, to take languages and sports. When I met my wife, she fully believes second place is still a loser. She will only accept first, but she's sort of grown up since. My point, even before being cut off, their relationship was transactional and distant. We found out my wife was infertile and it hit her hard, but we settled on adopting. But her mother is anti-adoption. Long story, won't get into it, trauma relating to adoption. So when we adopted our daughter of three, my wife's parents cut her off. It's our daughter's first birthday with us. My wife was going on about how sad she is her parents won't be here. And I said, I have a hard time sympathizing or relating. I didn't receive the same childhood as you, nor did I know my parents. I just meant that I can't understand, and I can't be there for her to support her in that. She said, what, so I can't be upset because you had it worse? Then stormed off. She since changed the topic, but still insists I'm fully in the wrong. It was like when I complained to her about my pet dying and she said, I've never had a pet, but it must be hard. I didn't criticize her for that. Am I the jerk? Uh, yeah, kind of on this one, I think. The whole point of sympathy is to try and understand someone's emotions, even though you don't fully know what they're going through. At the end of the day, it's all relative. This is still hurtful for her. She's lost something that's made her life a lot more difficult. Yes, in your perspective, it might not sound to be so bad, but she is your wife and you should be trying to help her feel better. I do think I understand what you intended to say, but that is not how it came out at all. It definitely just sounded like a complete disregard of her emotions. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, give Am I the Genius a shot, linked in the description as well. Either way, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.